Stephen Hawking is the most famous physicist alive. The world sees him as the celebrity egghead in a wheelchair. He said he would tell us how the universe worked and how it began. We once thought we were at the center of the universe. Then we thought the sun was. Eventually we realized we were just on the edge of one of billions of galaxies. Soon we may have to humbly accept that our 3D universe is just one of many multi-dimensional worlds. Hawking's no-boundary condition is his most radical suggestion to date. It's a proposal, not a theory, but it's based on strong science. Hawking's universe did not have a beginning, but bizarrely, it has also not existed forever. In Hawking's mind, our universe has no creator. It came out of nothing and exists all on its own. It's the ultimate free. And that our universe is not the only universe, but is instead part of a vast complex of universes that we call the multiverse. Well, three dimensions of space, and you can think about those as height, width, and depth. But string theory says that on fantastically small scales, there are additional dimensions crumpled to a tiny size, so small that we have not detected them. But even though the dimensions are hidden, they would have an impact on things that we can observe because the shape of the extra dimensions constrains how the strings can vibrate. And in string theory, vibration determines everything. So particle masses, the strengths of forces, and most importantly, the amount of dark energy would be determined by the shape of the extra dimension. So if we knew the shape of the extra dimensions, we should be able to calculate these features, calculate the amount of dark energy. The challenge.
In string theory, it's possible that there may exist entirely separate giant sheets of space at work in the universe. And the central idea of string theory is quite straightforward. It says that if you examine any piece of matter ever more finely, at first you'll find molecules and then you'll find atoms and subatomic particles. But the theory says that if you could probe smaller, much smaller than we can with existing technology, you'd find something else inside these particles. A little tiny vibrating filament of energy, a little tiny vibrating string. And just like the strings on a violin, they can vibrate in different patterns, producing different musical notes. These little fundamental strings, when they vibrate in different patterns, <laughs> and I was cloning genetically identical cells, I started to realize that if I would take these genetically identical cells and put them into separate petri dishes and then change the environment in those dishes, that in one dish they will form muscle, in another dish they'll form bone, and yet in a third dish they would form fat by changing the conditions. So what is it that controlled why they became muscle or bone or fat? And the answer was very obvious. It was like information from the environment. If I take the brain out of any living organism, there's an immediate and necessary consequence of that action. What is it? Death. And here's the point. You can take the nucleus out of the cell and the cell doesn't die. The cell can live for two or more months without any genes in it at all. It's not sitting there. It's moving around. It's eating. It's growing. It's meeting other cells and communicating with them. It recognizes toxins and avoids toxins. In other words, I did not change the behavior in one way, not so ever, by taking classes of proteins in the membrane. They're and very important. One set is called receptors. What's a receptor? Do you have receptors? Of course you do. What name some? Skin? What name some other ones that people are pretty obvious about? Eyes, ears, nose, taste, touch. Where are all the receptors located? In your skin. And the same with the cell. But in the cell they're not organized into these structures that we see, but the proteins have antennas on them. 
And each different thing the cell can see has a different protein with a different antenna. So for insulin, I have a receptor that sees insulin. For glucose, I have a receptor that sees glucose. For light, I have a receptor that responds to photons of light. So for everything the cell can see, there's a special receptor inside the cell. If I can uh, show it to you again, um, it works like this. Again, watch this. This is what controls biology. Antennas receive the signal from the environment, and when a signal is received, it changes the shape of the protein and allows the connecting device to connect the receptor to the output. The output is the channel. The channel creates a signal that enters into the cell, and that signal that now is going to go enter into the cell activates the functions of the cell. It causes the cell to move. It causes the cell to digest things. It causes the cell to change its uh, structure or behavior. So the fact is what? This is a, a signaling device. This, the bottom line of life comes from protein movement. That's the truth. If you stop protein movement, life stops right at that point. And it's, proteins are the only molecules that are moving, so they become the most important. At the atomic level, particles are almost not there. The entire universe, including space, time, and even gravity, are made of tiny, string-like objects that only appear to be different particles because of the different ways they vibrate. tiny level, our universe is like a crazy dance of waves, jangling to a myriad of beats. Particles appear and disappear at random. The next level, nothing is certain, not even... They're less like solid lumps of matter, and more like tiny, empty force fields. And as force fields, they shimmer. They're more like waves. Water, sound, and light can behave like waves. You read about an atom, you read about its electrical charges, its volts. The atoms are measured by volts. And so what we're looking at is atoms have waves of frequency energy, so each atom vibrates at a frequency. So it's not only emitting a frequency, but atoms can also absorb frequency because energy can be absorbed by other energy. So in other words, every atom is vibrating and giving off an energy frequency. But not only that, every atom is also receiving energy. So every atom or molecule in your body is not only giving off energy, but it's receiving energy, and the energy it receives will alter its expression. So what does that mean at the at level of the atom? Well, let me step in front of this and show you. And the answer is, of course, and it works like this. Here's a tuning fork. There's a protein receptor with an antenna on it. The antenna vibrates at a certain frequency. Now, the antennas generally respond, as conventional medicine says, to molecules, which is true, because molecules have their own frequency, as it said in that slide. And when the molecule is present, if it vibrates at the same frequency as the receptor, then the receptor will vibrate when the molecule vibrates. And when the receptor vibrates, it will go from confirmation one to confirmation two as a result of responding to that vibrational energy. So the bottom line is what we expect is this. I hit the tuning fork, and then the, the receptor, which is in confirmation A, begins to absorb the energy, and then the result changes the shape of the protein, the structure of you know, the assembly of the, the, the backbone, how it's organized, changes that, and then the receptor goes to confirmation B or two at this particular case. So the point is... What is this called? And the answer is, in the dictionary, there is a word for this. And the word is perception. Awareness of the environment through physical sensation. And basically, so you just saw the labeling of what? A device that controls the cell. What is this device that controls the cell known as perception? So are you controlled by genes? No, you're controlled by perception. Energy, mortal, I'm part of the field. I'm something out there that's being picked up. What? Well.